my name is Mary Gaddams, and I founded Racing the Planet in 2002. We had our, our first race in the uh, Gobi Desert of China in 2003. So I'm going to be taking through, I'm going to be taking you through most of the uh, presentation here. So this, this Zoom call is really for anyone taking part in the Gobi March in 2024, 2025, or anyone who's really thinking about the Gobi March. It gives you some great details that you might not find on the, on the website. So let's, let's get started. Okay, what are we going to go through in the uh, Zoom info uh, session? So we're going to uh, go over the uh, race details of the itinerary and the logistics. Uh, we'll go over the format of the Gobi March. Um, Carlos Garcia will join us and he will go over the daily stages of the Gobi March, which I'm sure you'll find extremely useful. Uh, we'll briefly um, also talk about talk about the weather, go over some key equipment that you need for the Gobi March. We'll um, answer some of the frequently asked questions, and then we will just talk talk a bit about what we try to to do locally in Mongolia. And then lastly, we'll open the presentation for any uh, questions that you have. I know a few of you submitted some questions before the before the presentation, so you're you're also free to ask those questions um, at the end if if those are not covered during the Zoom call. Okay, so for for those of you who don't know, uh, what is uh, what is a race on the planet ultra marathon? It's a two hundred fifty kilometer or one hundred fifty five five mile, a six stage, seven day self supported ultra marathon. The Gobi March will be our seventy fifth um, ultra marathon that we staged over the past twenty years. Uh, the uh, Gobi March will also be the 18th race um, that we've had in the Gobi Desert. The first 14 were in the Gobi Desert of China. This will be the fourth one that we hold in Mongolia. Uh, the Gobi March is part of the Four Deserts Ultra Marathon Series. So we have three other races in those in that series, the Namib Race, the Atacama Crossing, and the Last Desert in the Antarctic. You will probably find if you're at the Gobi March that several people will be um, taking part in what's called the Four Deserts Grand Slam or the Four Deserts Grand Slam Plus. And that is they're trying to finish all four races in the Four Deserts Ultra Marathon Series in, in 12 months. Those doing the Grand Slam Plus are trying to finish um, five races in, in one year. It's, it's super, super tough. So hat, hats off to all of those um, taking part in that. So every race, not, not only the Gobi March, is supported by a number of, <clears throat> excuse me, management, medical teams, volunteers, media team, local staff. So probably on, on average at every race, we have about 100 staff and volunteers supporting the racers. Okay. The Gobi March, just some uh, some very mi minute details. Um, you have to be in Ulaanbaatar by Friday, uh, June 21, and that is the racers. The volunteers arrive a day earlier on the on Thursday, the 20th. We will have a room uh, waiting for you in in your name. That is a twin room, so you will you will have a, a roommate. Um, check in time is 2 p.m. And we'll have the first meeting uh, the next day on Saturday, June 22nd at 10 a.m. In, in the race hotel. The official race hotel this year is the Novotel. Okay, what is what is the best way to get there? So actually, it is it is not as complicated as it seems to to uh, get to Mon Mongolia. There are several gateway cities that have nonstop flights uh, to M Mongolia. Those gateway cities are it's Istanbul, Frankfurt, Seoul, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Beijing, and sometimes I've I've seen Bangkok. So the key is to figure out which of these gateway cities that you would uh, like to fly through in order to get to M Mongolia. Now, Seoul has the most um, daily flights to Mongolia's. Um, 
And many times it's actually cheaper to book a flight if you book two different um, portions. So that is, say that you're flying through through Frankfurt, you would first book a flight to Frankfurt, and then you would book a second um, separate flight uh, to U Ulaanbaatar. Okay, um, in terms of visas, um, Mongolia last year said that the years 2023 to 2025 are going to be their their year. So they actually have waived visas for most citizens of, of the EU, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, Canada and US have always been visa free. However, there are some countries that still need visas. I believe um, India and China still still need visas. So make sure that you check to make to um, make doubly sure that you do not need a visa to visit Mongolia. So how do you how do you get there? Um, what what do you do once that you land? Well, first they have a they have a brand new airport. Um, it's located in the countryside. It is anywhere from a thir thirty minute to an hour uh, taxi ride in into the city. Um, it really de depends on what time that you land, whether or not that you will you will encounter traffic, but plan on on the possibility of traffic. And really, the best options for getting to the hotel are either by taxi or you can actually book a car directly with with the ho hotel. If you book a car directly with the hotel, the cost is probably double the price. The typical taxi price is about 30 U.S. dollars. I think the Novotel is somewhere around 70 U.S. dollars. Okay, when you're um, when you're flying, make sure that you hand carry the most important items like your shoes, your backpack, your food. Make sure if you're bringing the food that you um, leave the food in the original packaging. Now that that is especially true for any of your freeze dried meals or your um, powders. Now the good good news is getting food in, into Mongolia does, does not seem to, to be that difficult. We have uh, never had any issues with bringing food in, into Mongolia. Okay, make sure too, before you leave, that you have your insurance in, in place and it is mandatory for the race that you have medical and evacuation in, insurance. And it is your um, your choice, your option, whether or not that you wanna get other general in, insurance that covers things like um, flight uh, cancellations. If you have any issues um, finding insurance, email us and we will, we will try to send some details um, on that to you. Okay, what is what is the city of Ulaanbaatar like? Well, it is very much an urban city. It has about 1.5 million people living there. Believe it or not, only 65% of the people um, there were actually born there. Most have actually moved from the from the countryside. So what's happened? It's it's turned into a very a very sprawling city. And a lot of the roads can't handle all all of the traffic, so definitely be be wary of going from point A to point B because it it may look very close, but it it could end up taking you an an hour if if there's a lot of traffic. Um, there are many restaurants and cafes. Um, those actually coming uh, from Korea or those who who like Korean food, there's loads of Korean restaurants there. There are good supermarkets, ATMs. Most places take credit cards. Um, and there are some smaller sports and outdoor shops, but uh, they don't really carry the spe much of the specialized gear that you'll need for the race. So make sure that you um, carry carry that with you just in just in case that um, that the airline loses your luggage. Um, okay, race itinerary. Um, okay, so June 21, arrive the meeting place. Um, first meeting on June 22nd. You'll have a hotel room on the night of the 21st. And again, this is for racers, volunteers. You will also have a um, room on the night of the 20th. Um, and then Saturday, we will do a pre-race briefing at the hotel after breakfast, and we will then have race check-in where we will check your, your gear, you will meet with our medical doctors, we'll make sure that you have all of your forms, and then you will go out and grab lunch, and we will um, travel to Camp uh, One, which is about probably anywhere from three, three to four hours um, by bus. 
Uh, you will also uh, store your luggage in the, in the Novotel. So you will, uh, we, we will tell you where to bring it. It will likely be brought um, uh, to the area by the front desk and you'll leave that bag um, there for the week. And then when you get back after the, the race, the bag will be there uh, waiting for you. Um, so Saturday night, uh, the 22nd, is the first night um, where you will be in your tents. Um, you should also bring a, a meal for that night. Um, some, some bring uh, pizza fr from the town, other, other fresh food, because most will start eating their freeze-dried uh, meals the next uh, day. So the race um, is scheduled to start at, at 8, 8 a.m. each day. Now that, that time could change um, based on you know, things like, like the weather condition. And then the hotel is provided um, for you after the race on June 29th. So many um, actually leave on uh, June 30th. Um, however, some uh, stay on and uh, travel uh, through, throughout the country um, after that. We are planning to have the awards banquet at the at the Novotel, um, and that will be sometime probably Saturday night around sort of seven uh, p.m. But that time could change. Um, okay, so when you when you get to the uh, hotel, you should just check in, take it easy, make sure that that you have all of your gear there. Um, the next morning we will have breakfast. Um, and then again, Saturday, uh, we will be, um, after breakfast, we'll be having the briefing, check in, board buses, go to camp. Um, and then, and then Sunday, the very first day, so that would, would be stage one, we will typically have hot water at the campsite from about five, 530 AM and the race will start normally at eight. Okay, the format. So, what is the uh, what is the format? Well, we've we previously mentioned that it's six stages, seven days. Well, the course is actually marked with um, pink flags, and so these are these are pink flags on a on a metal stick, and there we like and you'll hear from Carlos to try to mark the course really well so that there is always a pink flag in line of sight, but that is not always um, possible. So, but that is our that is our goal. There is a checkpoint typically every 10 kilometers or, or, or six miles. And then at that checkpoint, you'll find water, you'll find a doctor, you'll find volunteers. We have a couple four by four vehicles. And normally each stage, a typical stage, will have four or five checkpoints with the with the last checkpoint actually being um, at uh, camp. So when you pass through each checkpoint, they will mark your uh, number down, the volunteers, and they will make sure that you that you are full of um, water. We're going to be very strict at this Gobi March, making sure that you leave each checkpoint with 1.5 liters of water at, at a minimum. And then when you uh, get to camp, you'll be you'll be given around 4.5 liters um, to use at uh, camp, and that that water is not to be used for washing. That is uh, really for drinking. And then you will also have hot hot water in in the middle of the campsite that you can use uh, for tea, coffee, or or making your uh, your freeze dried um, meals. So the scoring each day starts when the when the stage start and ends when you when you reach um, camp. Um, cutoff times we we do typically have cutoff times at every uh, checkpoint, but it's based on a four kilometer two point five per hour walking speed. So it is that they are very um, generous uh, cutoff times. Now we we typically give the cutoff times to you. Every every morning at the race briefing, which starts, which um, should should be held around seven thirty, um, and we we do also base um, base that on the the difficulty of, of the course. So we we would actually allow more time if the course is is more difficult. Okay. Um, again, the uh, briefing seven thirty. Race starts at eight. Um, everyone starts at the at the same time, unless you're you're told otherwise. Uh, follow the flags, the pink flags. Um, 
when you um, when you get to the final checkpoint, which is camp, your time uh, stops. Remember, when you get to camp, that is your time to rest and really get get ready for the for the next day. The only stage that is different it is the what's called the long march stage, and that is a stage which is up up to about eighty um, kilometers. And uh, that stage has an overnight checkpoint um, where you can actually rest and also get some hot, hot water. That is the only stage where you're actually able to, to get hot water. Otherwise, the hot water is always at camp. Okay, what is what is the campsite like? Um, so here you can see actually a pretty a pretty good drone uh, drone shot of a typical campsite. So this was actually the uh, the last um, campsite at the Gobi March at two thousand and three, and basically we have shared tents. You can see the uh, Kodiak, the kind of green tents, and those sleep uh, six or seven um, people. There's also an option if you want to bring a single tent, and you can see those single tents by the river. There's some orange ones, green, and that is an option for you. Um, we also have the cold cold water at camp, the hot water at camp. We have some fire pits um, set up morning and, and night. Uh, that is uh, weather permitting. Uh, we don't actually large. Uh, we don't actually allow charging. So if you need to charge anything during the week, make sure that you either bring a sort of a um, separate um, separate battery battery or a solar uh, charger. Um, at the Gobi March, the toilets are basically holes in in the ground. There is there there is no such thing as sort of port porta potties um, there. Um, we have, we should have about six. Uh, we also have a medical tent. You can see the white tent in this picture here. And then actually to the uh, right, in, right in front of the, um, the white tent is actually the uh, cyber, the cyber tent, which is um, set up. So you can see what a typical um, campsite looks, looks like. Okay. Um, Again, hot hot water uh, normally from about five thirty in the morning, and then the hot water should also be there for you when you finish around two. And we normally um, we normally keep some uh, people in the center of the campsite for hot water until about nine p.m. When you're in camp, you must use the uh, toilets, so you cannot go out by the side of of your tent. Uh, you you must use the toilets. You know, again, the water is not to be used for showers or washing. The water is for drinking. The only water that we use for washing, you can see in the bottom left there, that's actually right right in front of the medical tent. We have some uh, water that we have put in um, plastic tubs where you can actually soak your um, feet. Um, Cyber tent is typically open from three to eight. Those those hours could change. We'll have the hours posted by the cyber tent. Uh, we have tables and chairs in the middle of camp. Uh, the chairs are not meant to be in your tent. And then we have bins for rubbish and uh, trash. So so you you do not need to carry out your rubbish your rubbish and trash during the week. Okay, sleeping options. So you have um, basically three three options. Okay, the typical option is the shared tent, and you can see six, seven, eight, eight people can sleep in in one of those tents. So about ninety per percent of everyone choose that option, and it's a wonderful option. A lot of lifelong friends are are made in those tents. Those are also the type of tents that the that the volunteers sleep in. There is another option that we actually brought in during um, COVID. And that is the option where you can bring your own single tent. Now, the um, couple downsides with a single tent: number one, you don't um, you don't make as many um, friends uh, because you're obviously the only person in in your tent. Um, secondly, you have to put up and take down the tent um, every every day. Whereas if you have a shared tent, our local team will put up and take down the tent every day. You, you also, if you don't want to put up and take down a tent and don't want to be in a shared tent, you can also sleep under a checkpoint where which you can see on the on the far right. The problem with the checkpoint is if it's if it's windy, rainy, 
the sides really don't don't work so you're quite exposed okay and then the the much loved um cyber cyber tent um for some of you who have been at some of our other races too actually mongolia does not have that that great of mobile phone coverage out on the course you'll find that maybe th there is coverage, but it's typically not for 4G or 5G coverage. So it is very hard to send um, emails. Uh, so we have the cyber tent set up and that's where you can, you can read e emails, you can send emails, you could write a blog, you can view the scores um, after the first day. I should note that everything is, is offline. So what we do is we send, um, we send the emails in uh, batches dur during the day. Okay, the race coverage during the week, and you should make sure that your friends and family um, follow you. We update the website throughout each, each day uh, with photos, videos, blogs. We have stage updates. We have also something called breaking news and make sure your friends and family sign up to get the breaking news. We send out um, emails about five, five times every day to give people an up update on where um, e everyone is um, on the course. So all of this is all of this is free, except that you have to, if you want to send an email every day, there is a cost for the cyber uh, tent package, which we, we will explain further at the end of the uh, presentation. Okay, and then we also, we have a media team and we have someone taking pho photographs. We have someone uh, taking videos, which are also uploaded um, during the stage to the, to the website. And we, um, we do offer personalized photos and video um, packages. Okay, now I'm going to get Carlos Garcia on. Carlos, are you there? Sorry. Yeah, I'm Hello. here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to share your screen? So hi, hi everyone. This is uh, Carlos Garcia. Carlos has set many of our courses uh, for us and he's in the picture here too. And he will be setting the Gobi March course. And he, he's going to go by, he's going to give you an overview of sta stage by stage of the Gobi March. Okay. There we go. How can I do that? Uh, make it bigger. Okay, uh, you see it? Maybe? I think so, Carlos. We can still see the same photo from Mary, is that right? Uh, no, you are supposed to see my Mongolia Gobi March 2024. Okay. It's coming, okay, got it. Now it's showing. Okay, okay, good. So, um, okay, so the um, first thing, uh, how can I, how can I go to the next one here? Uh, first thing that um, I need to say is that um, I always think that um, the more different the culture that you are going to be running on uh, is from your own culture. Uh, looks like uh, the the travel is even deeper. So, and I and I think except if you are Mongolian, uh, then I think everybody will love this this race because the the culture uh, Mongolia culture is absolutely amazing. So um, uh, most of the Mongolians are are nomads. And uh, that means that uh, a huge percentage, like about more than 30% of the population, uh, they live in a way that uh, they move their houses. And, uh, and then let me introduce you to the, to the girl or the yurts uh, that you will be seeing all over the race because this is the way that they, they live. Uh, the yurts are small houses made of uh, very light materials because they they can mount them and and mount them very easily actually they can transport the whole gear in and they can put it down and transport it in in less than one day so it's absolutely incredible and then the outside is uh, waterproof and uh, is uh, very 
protected for the uh, harsh conditions that they they have in winter. So it's it's actually very very interesting. Uh, the inside it can be amazing. It can be very nice. Decoration can be astonishing. And you will have the opportunity of live maybe not in one of the fanciest ones, but you will enjoy living uh, for one night, sleeping for one night in one of the yurts. Uh, the people in Mongolia are absolutely amazing. They are friendly, uh, uh, and 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 their culture is, as you see in the in the uh, picture on the left side, is. Um, it's a mix of uh, the modern accessories uh, and uh, and the old fashioned and traditional outfit and that they still use every single day. Uh, Mongolia is the 15th uh, country in length, but uh, but is uh, the most uh, the less populated country in the world. And it has only um, around three million uh, inhabitants in Mongolia. Uh, traditions are super, super important for them, and uh, they still live. And the people that and, and and you will see it. The people that you will see along the course, uh, they 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 dress like uh, like tradition. They eat like tradition. They hunt and they fight like the tradition. And you will see all of this. So it's absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Um, animals are super, super important for um, um, for the Mongolians. Overall, the ones that live not in uh, not in Ulaanbaatar, that are the, the biggest uh, the biggest uh, city, but the ones that you will see along the course, uh, they live with the animals like in a very close uh, environment. Uh, horses, of course, are super, super important, and. Uh, uh, as I told you before, the amount of people that lives in Mongolia is around 3 million, but uh, they have around 50 million of uh, like between cows and sheep and goats and uh, uh, animals. So that means that the amount of animals comparing to the amount of people is incredible and they, they really love their animals. Um, they have, of course, uh, the cows, and uh, as you see in the picture with the pink flag, uh, life and death is is very present in the in the area of uh, of the of the race. But it's it's something that you have to understand and and live with that. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the, from the uh, wool of the goats, they uh, they use it for uh, warm uh, for create like uh, sweaters and jackets and dresses and uh, jerseys and and uh, it's called cashmere and uh, you can you can buy it in many shops that you will find in uh, in Ulaanbaatar but anyway in the in during the race you will see the goats where they come from <laughs> where they come from um okay gods and spirits is uh, uh most of the uh, mongolians are buddhist uh, but anyway, the Chaman culture is still super present in the in the in the normal life in uh, in Mongolia, and you will see many uh, like oration or uh, praying praying areas that uh, they use. But is they are not Buddhist, but they 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 still use them for for praying. It's uh, interesting to see these places, and uh, we just ask you to respect them. Uh, you know, just I I will show you as many as we can we can get in the, on the way of the course. So now let's get to the um, to the race. That is what you are probably more interested. Uh, this is come one where you will you will be uh, sleeping and on the on the first day. And these are the ruins of an old uh, palace uh, from one of the so uh, the the most of the race or all of the races is held around um, uh, an area that was an old capital of uh, of uh, Genghis Khan, and this is one of the uh, palaces, one palace of uh, one of the generals, old general, and this is the remains um, from here. It will be a stage one uh, that it will be around 36 kilometers 
and uh, you have you, we will give you this information in Britain uh, the the um, um, profile and the kilometers and everything and uh, I will be uh, going to Mongolia one week before you so I can I'm going to check every single part of this terrain to confirm that uh, that the race is still doable and uh, the changes that we are having, we, we I have in mind to do are, uh, this way, the information we will give you is uh, is correct and updated, okay? So um, the pictures that you can see on the right, they are parts of the course. Uh, we will be starting in the in the fortress of uh, Karbul King and, uh, and then crossing the asphalt underneath. And then you will see several yurts and, uh, and Mongolian people, uh, your first Mongolian people uh, living. And then we will get up the hill where you can see in the picture in the middle and uh, all the way down to the to the river. Uh, depending on the water, uh, you can find what you see in the lower picture or maybe it's drier, but for sure you will get some, some mud on the way. And then um, after that, you will head to the uh, second campsite that is uh, uh, ancient petroglyphs camp. Um, we are close to a, a, a rock uh, in this campsite. <clears throat> it's a very nice landscape next to the river. And uh, if you go down to the rock, you will see the uh, petroglyphs. It's uh, so many, it's a huge amount of petroglyphs there. And I really recommend you to like walk 25 meters is not more than that. So don't worry, you don't have to walk a lot. And uh, you can enjoy uh, ancient petroglyphs there that are to your hand. Uh, stage two is 45, a little longer, uh, 45 kilometers. And you will start uh, passing next to a, a small stupa uh, that you can see on the picture on the, on the top side. And uh, on the profile going up the hill, and uh, from on the hill is the picture on the right side, uh, this this one here, where the long runner. So Mongolia is is uh, this part of Mongolia is known for the long grass uh, and uh, uh, slopes that that we will uh, we will run in many of these. But in some cases we can find also valleys with trees and uh, and um, chaman. Uh, uh, places like uh, like the totem that uh, you see in the bottom the bottom picture. Uh, oops, in the bottom picture here, it's a, it's a, a piece of uh, agrar agrary uh, instrument, but they they use it for putting like these blue flags that uh, these uh, are used for praying, and uh, it's it's something interesting to see along along the course. So after uh, this uh, 1,000, a little bit more than 1,000 elevation gain, uh, you will get to the third campsite that is next to the mountain range. And uh, there you will have the opportunity to sleep in the, in the gears, in the gear camp. This is a permanent gear camp and uh, we will be using the gears. And uh, normally they do have beds, but to make a space for everyone in the tent, uh, we we are you are going to be sleeping in your own uh, sleeping uh, sleeping bags. From the um, from the gear camp, you will go up the hill, which is the picture here, and uh, you will have uh, probably to use your hand. Um, but don't worry because I am uh, very afraid of heights and uh, and um, I don't I don't have any kind of uh, dangerous uh, sections in any part of the course. So it's going to be uh, just difficult or extremely difficult, but but not dangerous. Uh, after the uphill, once you get to the pass, you will get uh, you will go down the hill on in a super nice valley. And then you will get to a, a monastery at the end. Uh, this at the end of the valley. That is a Buddhist monastery, and uh, you will have the opportunity to check inside the temples if you are not in a hurry or you are not winning the race. <laughs> but uh, I think it's worth it to like just that you are there. Stop and and enjoy the the the, the monastery and the cultural aspects. That I think that is 
one of the most important things that uh, difference uh, Racing the Planet with many other organizers that we are very keen on showing the cultural aspects of the country that you are going to be running on. Um, and then um, after the uh, monastery, you will get into one of the areas in this part of Mongolia that uh, is quite rare because it has like uh, an area with sand dunes. And uh, before the sand dunes, you will have a, a river crossing or maybe after, we are not sure yet. And uh, anyway, you will enjoy of both uh, places, the river crossing and the sand dunes. And uh, sand dunes are very spectacular because they are not very high, but uh, they are very difficult to, uh, to walk on them. Uh, uh, sand is quite soft. And uh, but they ha it has a lot of vegetation, which is rare because normally in the sand dunes there's not like a lot of vegetation, but it is in this one. This is stage three is uh, almost forty kilometers, is thirty nine point eight, with uh, six hundred and seventy three meters elevation gain. Uh, campsite number four will be next to the um, next to the sand dunes. And uh, it will be, we will be in the uh, Stepa, um, Mongolian Stepa, and uh, that you will, you, you will love those areas and those uh, uh, sunsets. They are absolutely amazing. Uh, then it's uh, um, in this, normally in Racing the Planet, uh, long stage is in the, is uh, stage five, but considering, <clears throat> considering the, um, um the track and the places that we want you to see on daylight uh we have changed in uh, slightly this um gobi march and uh, st a long stage is going to be on the on the fourth fourth day um at the beginning you will you will uh, start uh running on on uh, rolling hills that uh, you can find interesting places you will find many uh, many yurts of uh, people living there but uh, maybe uh, we can we can pass by these uh, uh, rock piles that we haven't understand exactly what are these rock piles probably like a chaman um, place as well um, then you will have uh, as I said uh, the many many yurts many nomad people living there with the cows and the cattle uh, in the area and um, you will have the opportunity to go by a village, a small village, it's called Kashad. And uh, we will have one of the last uh, checkpoints uh, right there. Uh, once, once you uh, get off the village, uh, you just go into the Orkon River, that is the campsite uh, you can see in the picture on the left. This is going to be the river, which is a very demanding uh, campsite because uh, the river is fantastic to uh, like clean a little bit and uh, swim if you if you don't mind uh, swimming in cold water. But it's a very very nice place, and and I'm sure you will enjoy it. And after the long stage, almost the big part is done. So uh, let's let's get to the fifth one and the, almost the last one. Um, Okay, Orkon River is uh, is a very amazing area of Mongolia and uh, is a UNESCO heritage site. Uh, so uh, it's it's super interesting to uh, to to see. We are going to cross because Orkon River in that area is divided in several rivers, and they they get together again uh, once they get to Karakorum, uh, which is the finish line. And uh, you can see right here at the at the bottom of the of the map. And therefore, uh, instead of just one river crossing, you will probably have two or three river crossings. And uh, but then after crossing the after uh, underpass, uh, underpassing the the main road, um, which is a very tiny road, by the way, don't don't think it's a highway. Uh, then you will get to Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> Meaning uh, not in a in a time uh, travel, but uh, meaning that the landscape will change dramatically 
and you will be in the middle of a forest, uh, like like uh, with a, a milka cow somewhere, <laughs> um, and then you will get to the campsite, um, uh, which is uh, as uh, Mary was showing you before in the big picture, is next to the river. Uh, stage six is uh, is super easy. It's uh, nine kilometers only, and uh, um, it's uh, five point eight miles, and with eight uh, elevation gain, um, eight meters elevation gain, eighty meters elevation gain. Sorry, and then you will get to Erdenesu Monastery. Uh, that you have it. Let me see here. There you go. And this is what you were looking for. At the end of the 250 kilometers, this is what you get. And uh, we hopefully see you every single one of you there, right at the finish line. Okay, there you go. How can I, uh, okay, there you go. Thank you so much, Carlos. That was great. Yeah, it it just uh, looking at Carlos's pictures, it just it brings back memories of just what a spectacular place that that Mongolia is. Yeah, you're all going to yeah. just absolutely love it. So let me. Um, OK, let's see here. Okay, so uh, thanks. Thanks again, Carlos. So to to just summarize the course. We will have um, basically a lot of the course is, hold on a second. Uh, so a lot of it is actually like green, uh, green um, grasslands. Um, so, some of what you see here, there are some, some sand dunes. There's some forests. There's a, a rocky overpass. There are river crossings, yurts dotted along the course. You'll, you have the opportunity to see petroglyphs. You'll see a lot of wild horses, cattle, sheep, and you'll be actually camping one night in the Orchid Valley, which is an absolutely amazing place. And then the finish line is stunning. It is it is a real privilege to, to, to be able to finish at the Erden Zoo Monastery. Okay, what is the uh, what is the weather going to be like for the course? Okay, well, um, so the uh, so late June is uh, really considered late spring, early summer in, in Mongolia. The temp temperature is moderate. I would say the temperature in Mongolia is probably the most moderate out of any of our uh, race courses. Um, however, it can get very, very hot there, or it could get very cold. Now, last year, it, it got quite hot. So be, be ready for everything. Um, although although Mongolia's uh, its name is the land of blue sky, which means which means that it has many many a days each year of sunny skies, there is the possibility of rain and and thunderstorms. It can also be uh, windy. Um, so in terms of temperature, be uh, ready that it could get up up to about forty Celsius, hundred Fahrenheit, and it could could get as low as sort of five uh, Celsius, forty one at at night, forty one Fahrenheit at night. Um, make sure that you bring a lot of uh, sunblock because there are very uh, very strong UV rays in Mongolia. And but the good good news about Mongolia is that the sun sunrise is at 515 and sunset is at is somewhere around 9 p.m. So you have 15 plus hours of of daylight. So really only on the on the long stage, uh, the long march will will you be running in the dark. Otherwise, you for the most part should should finish in the in the daylight. Okay, what type of gear um, do you need? So um, all of you can download a, a list of what's needed for the for the Gobi Mark on the on the website, and I've got a link to it um, at the at the right hand um, side of this page. Basically, there's 35 items that are mandatory that you must bring, and you, you can see them on the on the left hand side. Everything from a backpack to waterproof jacket to cap to uh, food for seven seven days. So we we do when we go through check-in, we check all of your um, all of these 35 items to make sure that that you do um, have them. 
And you can see on the on the right hand side, the list will actually explain what that you need for each item. And it also re recommends some brands um, for you. Um, there are also some what we call optional items, such as things like um, trekking poles, um, sleeping mat, that although they are they're not mandatory, uh, some of them are highly re recommended to bring. So you, you can see really the key items are the shoes um, and possibly gaiters, backpack, the hydration system, uh, food. Now, um, people always ask the question, well, should I, should I bring gaiters? Well, I, I would say um, two of the reasons why that people might not finish a race. One would be um, one would be blisters, and then the second might be some uh, stomach issues. I would always err on the side of uh, wearing gaiters because there is a sandy section, and there is um, you know grit, small stones that that could get into your shoes. So gaiters will definitely help pre prevent blisters. Um, the, the other optional items to consider, sleeping pad, trekking poles, um, eating bowl, um, to toothbrush and toothpaste. Um, I would say with a sleeping pad, I, I would recommend bringing a sleeping pad because the, um, because the ground can be, can be quite cold. And if the, you're not a, able to get a good night's sleep, it will definitely Im impact your stage each day. Trekking poles is, is very much a personal choice. Some absolutely swear by trekking poles. Others don't don't want to be bothered with trekking poles. So basically, if if you trained with them, like them, bring them. If you haven't trained with them, you might you know try them. But if that you don't like them, certainly do not um, do not bring them. Okay, the food you you need fourteen thousand uh, calories plus the dinner at camp one. And we, we will be checking the calories at check-in on the Saturday morning before the race. So there on the, the right, you can see just some different pictures of um, different gear items that, that you need to bring. Okay, some, some frequently asked um, questions. Okay. Um, so, and this is specific for the Gobi March. Are there river crossings? Uh, yes, there, there will be river crossings. Are there streams or lakes near camps? Um, I would say likely, absolutely yes, um, in this Gobi March. Um, are there animals, in, insects on the course? Yes, you will see so, so many animals. You also might have some insects on uh, different at different uh, campsites. In terms of snakes, um, I actually, over the 20 years at Racing the Planet, I've maybe seen a total of five snakes in the in the deserts. Um, I have seen one, one in Mongolia, but they're they're very, very uh, rare to to see. Um, how How hot will it be? As I said, on, on average, it's a very moderate climate, but it can get extremely hot or it can get extremely cold. Should I bring gators? Um, I would always err on the side of saying yes, I would I would bring gators because it it will prevent you or it will help to prevent you from getting blisters. Um, do I get hot water on, on the course? Uh, we've mentioned this previously. The answer is not typically only on the long march stage, which in this race will be stage four, will, will you get hot water? Otherwise, the hot water is always at camp. Um, how do the cutoff, works, uh, cutoff times work on the long march? Well, we will be giving you cutoff times for each, each checkpoint. There is one checkpoint typically midway through the stage that we call an overnight checkpoint. We will have tents set up where you, you can rest and we will give you a time by which that you, you must leave that, um, that checkpoint. So that is a checkpoint where you can typically expect to spend several um, hours resting. Um, how much should should my pack weigh? Now, this is also a really important question. So on, on average, the typical um, backpack weighs about 10, 10 kilos or 22 pounds. We have seen the backpacks as low as 5.5 5 kilos or 6 kilos. Um, absolute, absolute maximum would be 15 kilos. However, we really re recommend that that you um, never have a pack, pack, uh, backpack over 12 kilos. So really, really try to get that um, backpack 
um, down under under 12 kilos, even 10 or under. Um, can I use water for washing? Um, as as I mentioned before, um, no, the water is just for uh, drinking. However, if you're by a river or stream, we will have our medical team check it out to make sure that the water is is okay, and and you may um, you may wash in the uh, river or stream. Um, is is there mobile re reception on the course? There is some, but it's it's extremely sporadic, and it's typically not um, for four or five G. It's uh, norm normally around three G. Um, do I have to carry all my rubbish trash? No, you can actually. We have uh, trash bins at every checkpoint. You can uh, you can get rid of of your rubbish. And you can also get rid of your rubbish um, at camp. However, don't leave your rubbish in your tent. Make sure that it is um, always put in rubbish uh, bins. Um, and as we went over the sunrise, sun, sunset, uh, sunrise 515, sunset around 9, 9 p.m. So lots of time for a uh, light, which is which is good. It means that really only the long stage will will you be out in the in the dark. Um, what what is the withdrawal rate for the Gobi March? Um, over the past few years in Mongolia, it's been around it's been around ten per, percent, and really that has mostly been well due to um, due to stomach issues, due to blisters, or thirdly. Um, people whose backpack is too um, heavy. Um, so those are those are the main reasons. Okay, and what what happens if you you have to withdraw? Well, based on where that you are at camp, uh, we can offer an option to take you back to the city, or we would more than welcome love to have you stay with the, with the race. And you can either join the volunteer team, or you can you can just be driven from campsite to campsite. So we would warmly welcome you to stay. Some people want to go back. If in fact you you want to go back to the to the city. Um, we will arrange a transfer for for you. The transfer is is at your cost. We will actually let let you know what those fees may be um, before the race starts. Um, can your family or friend be part of of the race? Well, we have a number of people who are volunteering who have a friend or family in, in the race. And then we have what's called the friends and family experience. And that is where your friend or family can come out to the race uh, for the last night, actually stay in the campsite with you, have a wonderful, wonderful freeze-dried meal with you, and has the option of actually walking, walking or running the last stage with you or can be driven to the finish line. So that is an option that's been a very um, popular option. Um, so we would recommend that if you have family or friends that they consider that option. If they don't want to do that, they can also email us and we will let them know when uh, the time of the uh, time of the finish line is um, really later in the week um, during the uh, during the race. OK, um, Mongolia is such a special uh, country, so so beautiful. Um, everyone seems to want to visit it now. And in fact, uh, Lonely Planet named it the number one place to visit in, in 2024. Um, but as part of every race, we like to try to give give back. We do different things. We, we really like to support um, small initiatives. Uh, we try to find families that are living along the course to, to help. Mongolia is actually the perfect place to help. Um, last year, one of our volunteers who was a Peace Corps volunteer in Mongolia came up with the idea or asked to give lithium batteries. So these are batteries that are about the size of a car battery to, uh, to yurts uh, to yurts along the course. And these batteries help to provide you know power for the water pumps for a small uh, fridge for charging mo mobile phones and when we when we showed up last year at the different yurts and actually Carlos Carlos helped helped us quite a bit you can see in the bottom right hand side 
and we um, and we gave uh, the families a battery. I mean, most of them thought that they had, you know, that they had died and gone to heaven. And they they were just they were all smiles. And some of them then would show up at camp with a with a plastic bottle full of sort of lamb and they wanted to share a, a meal with us for thanks. I mean, it was really wonderful. So we're gonna do that again in 2024. And then also everything we have at camp, we try to re reuse um, and we um, don't want to really leave any uh, any lit litter around. You, you can see at the top right-hand um, corner, we actually, every water bottle that we we use, we actually don't cut or break. Uh, we uh, put caps back on it and we actually give it to the, to the local herdsmen who actually use it to put um, cow milk or different types of tea in th that they then uh, sell. So it's, um, so that, that actually works out uh, re really well. And then we will also be really encouraging the racers and the volunteers to bring t-shirts, notebooks, pens, pencils, coloring books that we also give out to the to the kids. And, and that's been an, been an extremely um, popular thing. So if, if anyone has questions about any of these, just send me an, uh, send me an email. OK, your um, final uh, checklist um, for the Gobi March, um, finalize your travel. Um, make sure that your gear matches with what the gear list says. Um, Make sure that you stitch on all of your um, patches to your tops. Uh, we will be sending out patches soon, so don't panic if you haven't gotten your patches yet. If, you're, um, if your mailing address has changed since you registered, make sure that you send us the new details. Um, also, make sure you fill out the mandatory forms. Uh, those of you um, who are officially registered for 2024 will have access to the competitor area. Um, keep up your training plan, but most importantly, stay injury free. Um, watch and read all the recommended in info that we're sending to you. It's also, it's not too late to get a personal trainer. Um, maybe you get them for some, you know, uh, you know, last few months advice with training, also with gear. If you haven't done it before, it's always helpful to uh, get, get an expert to ask. Um, and then make sure that you are in Ulaanbaatar by the um, or on the on the twenty first of June. Okay, just some some extras, and these are completely optional that we offer as a service. Uh, some of you want single rooms. This has been very popular since um, COVID, and you can actually purchase that on the website. We also, as mentioned, we have a cyber tent package, which allows you to send one um, email every day. But that one email could then be, you know, sent to lo loads of, um, you know, friends and family, um, and that's fifty. And then photo package. We have um, really uh, stunning, uh, stunning photos, um, both both of of you and the actual course and we are we're, we've also started something new where we offer a personalized video package we only offer a few because these are obviously are very um very time consuming to to create but these have been very very popular as well and then of course i mentioned the friends and family experience and if um you have any friends and family that just you know are going to meet you at the finish line and then want to go to the banquet you can also purchase a separate um, banquet ticket um, so that is that ends my presentation, and now I wanted to open the floor for any um, any uh, questions that you might have. Whilst we wait for people to ask Mary and Carlos, one question was: Are there leeches in the in the uh, rivers? Yes. Uh. So the. Uh, so the question to that is, I don't think so. I've never seen a leech. I'm I'm actually quite um, quite an expert in leeches. I've I've had leeches in other countries um, on my feet all the time. I haven't I haven't seen any any yet. So probably not. But but like everything at every race, I can never it never absolutely guarantee. Carlos, uh, I have a I have a question to Carlos Evgeny here. Super excited to race in 2024. Uh, so we basically have to, we have river crossing or 
crossing every every stage, right? Crossing what rivers? Uh, the river or the water water stages. It's every stage. Uh, not every stage. Uh, but uh, like for example, stage one, you will. Uh, then stage two, uh, there is no river. Uh, stage uh, three, uh, probably there is no river as well. Mm. Okay. And uh, long march, uh, there will be rivers. And stage five, there will be rivers. And in and, and stage, uh, the long march, how, at what point will we cross? In how many kilometers it will be? Because then it will be wet, right? Running. No, it's uh, it's not like uh, it's uh, below the knee for sure. Ah. I don't think the water is going to be high or something like that. So, but I mean, it, the shoes will be wet, the right? Wider, the wider and deeper rivers that you will be crossing, they all all will be in a stage five. Oh, okay. Okay. A stage five. If you have uh, like a small flippers, you can bring them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's actually but, good. Uh, yeah, but because you will you will cross uh, Orkon River, and uh, normally that is uh, that is a little bit wider. Uh, but we will have safety measures like a rope or something like that. And if uh, if you don't know how to swim or whatever, and the river is high or whatever, then we will we will be using zodiacs or something like that. So that you don't have to worry for that. Okay, thank you. He is the main main worry of uh, the whole organizing. Hi, this is Alisher. Uh, so I, I, I'm planning to uh, fly the night before, and I was uh, wondering if it's possible to uh, order a, like a uh, a room for additional night. So we don't have to check out and check in again. Yeah, um, actually. So the best thing to to do is to book the uh, book book the room separately, just through the hotel or one of the major booking sites. And when you get to the hotel, to ask, tell them you're part of the Racing the Planet group, and ask if you can you can keep the same the same room. Okay. Okay, and then I, I, I think there was uh, there was a question submitted before the Zoom call about if there's any security concerns in, in Mongolia. Um, I am not aware of, of any at this point. I think it's it's one of this one of the safer countries in in the world at this moment. Um, I have one question from Korean on my side. Uh, well, to Carlos probably, and we have uh, each each stage we have a courses at uh, the routes, and then uh, do we get any like GPX file for our GPX what watches? No, no, you uh you won't get the GPX file. Uh, you will have to follow the flags. Okay. Yeah, some sometimes um, it's just the very nature of these races because of either rainfall, uh, snow, snow melt in the mountains that we have to constantly make uh, changes to them to the to the courses almost almost every every day. Uh, the the idea is that you will have uh, at the beginning of the race when you when they give you the your bib, uh, they will give you as well uh, a small booklet with. All the basic information that you will uh, the, the part of the final uh, measurements of every stage exactly what is the distance between checkpoints uh, what is the elevation gain between checkpoints all the information okay yeah. but anyway uh, we are I am I am normally going like mm, around two days ahead of the race and uh, if there is any problem like floods or uh, whatever situation that we have to change the course, then then uh, in the briefings we will inform you, and then you will have to like adjust the, the that document. But anyway, normally uh, we can follow up the instructions in the document because it's it's pretty accurate. Thank you. And just to follow up on that comment, so each each camp will have its own uh, coordinates GPS coordinates that you will have. 
So they will not change, right? They will be the same for yeah. each. Campsites okay. normally are the same, but but it can vary as well because uh, in in some races, you know, uh, it can happen that the rain is super heavy and we have to abandon the campsite and 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 go to a shelter uh, that we have chosen uh, beforehand, and that means that the 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 actual campsite will be will change because we 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 are going to be sleeping in the shelter but uh normally uh, when when something like that happens we inform you and uh you know what what's going on okay do we have any other questions well if if anyone has questions, feel feel free to email me. I'll be sending you all a, a recording of the Zoom call. I'll also send you the presentation. We'll send you Carlos's presentation also. Um, and we'll send, the, send that out in the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. And I just wanted to wish um, many of you also a happy uh, happy year of the, the dragon, Kun, Kunhei Fat Choi. And then also to those... Um, who are watching the Super Super Bowl? I I, I hope that your team wins. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm I'm super excited to to meet some of you all for the first time and see some of you all for the second or third or fourth time. And it's it's going to be an amazing race. It is a spectacular place. It is. Yeah. And. We, we we have a great team, a great medical team, great volunteer team, um, you know, great uh, staff. It's just going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. A great, great local team, too. OK, everyone, thank you very, very much. Thanks. Um, thank you, Sam and Carlos. Also, 